Now, we have some MVPs of the Team Coco world. You know her as the co-host of Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. Sonam Ossessian is here. You know him from Blackish. You know him from his very funny special on Netflix called Cole Hearted, which I, personally I wanted that name, but you know, he got it before me. And he's got a new special slash non-special out that I want to talk to him about. Please welcome Sodom Obsession and Dion Cole. Thank you both for being here. Hey, Dion. What's up, family? How's everybody? We're good. Sana, what is that behind you, Sana? A poncho? No, I don't know. Okay, so I'm at I'm at the Largo. Oh. I'm, on, uh, we're, I'm backstage because we're shooting today. And then I looked over and there's a random, like, <laughs> military uniform here for no reason. I don't even know what this is. What side is that for? <laughs> What does that represent though? What what kind of military? What is that? Is that one American's ally? I don't even know. I think Marines. Come on, son. I don't know. Do the Marines wear white? Come on, son. Put it on. Party a party a role play outfit. Sona, put it on. I don't. I just <laughs> gotta put it on. See, this is, this is gonna get a lot of trouble. I'm gonna get free cheese off. She has just a random military outfit behind her. Could be anything. Could be for any side. Perfect out of context. size, probably. How about if it's the perfect size? Yeah. <laughs> Fits like a glove, and it's not yours. Yay! Hey! hey. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> you feel powerful? <laughs> yes, I feel like I can... I can do anything without any repercussions. <laughs> Boxy as hell is like a Steve Harvey suit. If Steve Harvey went to the military. I remember I wrote a bit for Conan about Steve Harvey suits, and that did not go well. Yeah, I might be giving away a coffee bit we're doing. Oh, snap. <laughs> Sonna, what would it take for you to, to join any sort of military organization? I don't think I could ever join the military. I don't know. Can you guys? I know I wouldn't because I did uh, a TV show where I played uh, a soldier and then I, I always get cast as the soldier who dies immediately. It's like coward soldier number one. We're like, guys, I don't think we can do this. And I died when like, you know, the first part of the show when the credits are still rolling mm -hmm. of like who's in the show. I died at that part. <laughs> I'm black. I know. <laughs> Every black person dies during the credits of horror movies. A hundred percent. Die when like the- Every horror movie, the credits go up and they go, what's that, what? <laughs> during the song, during the song where they introduce everyone. <laughs> hey Jack, we going, we going boating today? <laughs> Oh no. Oh, no. This reminds me of my Conan bit, the death's moving back and forth. Yeah, look at you. Look at this setup. If you guys are not familiar, Dion Cole has been DJing Disco Mornings. You bought all this equipment a couple years ago, and then just in the lockdown, you started- I bought it four years ago and never had time to play with it and just had it sitting up. And then when this pandemic hit, I was like, let me see if I can play this. Next thing you know, I start had DJ sending me records to break and all of that. So it's been going great, it's been good, it's been fun. Something to do, keep your mind sane. You live alone, and you don't have no woman or no oh. pets. Yeah. Well, this is what he's known for. He's the DJ that cries. Like right before the bass drops, he <laughs> fully cries. You tend to, you tend to live through the music. <laughs> when I first started, people was Busting up laughing, man. It was like, <laughs> don't quit your day job. Like, oh. everybody was going, because I was so horrible with it. But I figured, you know what? If I learn how to do this in front of these people's faces, they're going to feel some kind of way because you should be doing something with your pandemic time. You yeah. should be learning a new language, writing a script, doing something you love to do. And while you're laughing at me, I'm going to, I'm going to get better. And that's exactly what happened. Would you ever do requests? I know DJs absolutely hate that. Nah, I won't do no requests. Nah, not at all. Someone come no. up to the booth, grabbing on your equipment. With their yeah, I'm like, <laughs> and then projection five. And no, then I'm like, why are you going to come in here and ask to request something you just heard in the car? 
Like, right. <laughs> you should have it on your playlist already. Why would you come in here and want to hear it too? Like, you love it that much? Can you play a full episode of the Joe Rogan podcast? <laughs> oh my that's how god! I, get I start talking about nootropics. That's how I get. <laughs> Me and Timothy Ferris. You, going on. you silly as hell. <laughs> And you also have your record behind you. Do you ever try to work your stand up into some disco just on the, the B side? I did one day. I did it one day. I played a track and I played I play my my uh, my uh, comedy on the track. But then I took it off because I play every Sunday at like 11 a.m. And yeah. it's a lot of older people. And it just didn't go good with Disco Sunday Fellowship. And I was going, you see that being out, sticking and out, pushing and I was, I was like, yeah, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't the Lord. Hey, man. Yeah, that, that ain't the Lord's <laughs> work. That's not the drip. This guy be fucking, I know this guy be. I need a backslide as hour. <laughs> Dion Cole, Saturday night backslide, backslide. <laughs> so Sona has picked up kind of a quarantine skill you picked up archery have you kept up with that my husband wanted to buy a gun and i was like please don't buy a gun and so he's like okay i'm gonna buy a bow and arrow and so he bought like this massive bow and arrow and all the equipment like the wrist guard and the thing that you put on your back to like pull out arrows what is it called the qu uh quill quiver i forgot quill Quiver, 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 that's what it yeah. is. And so uh, sometimes like we just go to our backyard and we just shoot bows and arrows at this bag. Wow. Just enough terrible things were happening last year that I remember when, when, you, when you, were, you told me about this, I, my first thought was not like, whoa, that's whimsical. It was like, that's actually smart archery. You it's know, actually you're... fun. It sounds fun as hell. But if you're using it to protect you all, you will be shot. Just know, just know that, yeah. know that they will shoot you. <laughs> the, the time it takes for him to put his gloves on and grab his arrows. I got to chalk my hand. Lick the arrow and line it up. Cause I know he lick his arrows. Lick the arrow and line it up. Wait, wait, wait. Why is Tack licking the arrows? He, because that you got, that's the sinister fucking way to do it. You got to lick the arrow before you, before you shoot him. You lick your arrow. By the time you do all of this, and then you gotta, then you gotta like aim it. You gotta get the aim. He will be shot. Oh, yeah. Just let you know that. Why is he signing up to leave DNA at the scene? <laughs> this sick. That's just that's just sick arrow stuff you do, man. It's like just a little semen on the arrow and just then... arrow stuff. It's cool arrow stuff, man. There are there are better ways to protect yourself from like a home invasion. You got a robber standing there like this, like. Hey, Sona, I left that rash cream in your dressing room. Oh, oh man! Oh. What did he say? We missed a solid joke. He said, "I I left that rash cream in your dressing room." Oh, that's great! Tell us about the rash. There is no rash. He's just being an asshole. You know, Matt's a pretty straight-laced <laughs> guy. He wouldn't just make something up. Dion, you did something I would never do, where you put out essentially a non-special special, special uh, pretty recently on Netflix's mm -hmm. YouTube channel, I think it's on, where you're working out material for a tour, for not even a special, where you're like, I have a half idea. To even before you go on tour, you, you do these small shows that if, if anyone even listened to a voice memo of mine, I think I would die. And you put this out, it's so funny. It's hostile. You're yelling at audience members. It's incredible. But uh, besides just like having nothing to do, what was the incentive behind putting that out? I was thinking like, yeah, all that material that I was working on for my special that I chose not to use, is still funny. And I was like, man, I wonder, I should put something together. So. I put together all this footage of stuff that I was doing, um, that I was working on, that that I did not choose for, for my tour or my up and coming special. And I was like, man, I should just put it together and show the people just the whole process of, of, of how we come up with material and how it doesn't work and how we're insecure with it. And just these nights of 
everything ain't glorified. Everything ain't in front of yeah. 3,000, 3, 5,000 people every night. This is 40 people, me trying to work this out and show people this process, you know, as well as give them something, you know, that they can, you know, laugh at and, and have during these pandemic times or whatever. So I put it together, Netflix saw it and they was like, damn, like, yeah, we can definitely do this. And I was like, yeah, we should definitely put it on the YouTube channel. Like, just keep it raw, give it to the people. And they was like, yeah. yo, let's do it. And we put it out and I think I'm like up to, it's been probably about since October, November. It's almost at a million. Yeah, we almost had almost a, a million, which is crazy. I, I I watched it maybe a couple times. It was the first thing that made me really miss performing live because that's what it yeah. is. You watch a special, someone has a bunch of purple lights behind them and a leather shirt they never wear. Yeah, I, that doesn't make me miss it. That's like, oh, that feel like his agents are backstage. Yeah. But when you're in the lab, you're yelling at people. This woman's like catfish. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> that was the first thing that made me miss performing live yeah, man and it was and it was genuine you know it was a genuine it was a genuine take all those were genuine takes and i was like preparing for my tour that i was gonna go out on in april and then when covid hit it just it stopped all that and i just was like damn you know yeah. but so the the tripped out thing is people love it and i'm glad they love it and they be gravitating to it but um they didn't, they still haven't seen what I kept. So I would love, so if, if, if they're loving that, that's amazing. I can't, yeah. wait, I can't wait to, for them to see what I kept, you yeah. know, out of all those nights. Yeah. Because also you're doing well. You're the first person I've seen do well. And am I wrong? Is this performed in the improv lab? The lab. Yes. Okay. So if anyone's not familiar, the improv is like, uh, the improv got a divorce. And mom's <laughs> house is the main room. It's incredible. There's food. And then the lab is <coughs> dad's house. It is. It's mostly a bar. There's not a lot of people. It's sketchy. People have nothing better to do. It's hostile for no reason. And you, you pulled off essentially a special in the worst room in L.A. Arguably the worst room. See, the thing about L.A. is when they come to comedians, that's why everybody think they funny because everybody here is so polite and so giving that motherfuckers be feeling like, yo, they the funniest motherfuckers in the world. But you go take that shit to Memphis, they will murder your ass in Memphis. They will throw shit at you that shouldn't even be at the comedy shows and shit. So, so right. you, <laughs> rice. Like, <laughs> I have a wedding who later. Cook, a wedding. Who threw cooked rice at me? What? Right. Through <laughs> office real chairs at me. <laughs> You're like, who's cooking rice? So I was like, man, let me get, let me do the lab. And and the people at the improv were so cool, man. And so I was like, they was like, yeah, you want to work out in the main room? I was like, nah. nah. Nah, and my and, and my and my manager, I mean my agent Andrew was like, "Yo, yeah, you you should you should do the lab." And we was like, "Fine." So we got up and I did, and I was like, "I remember those first few nights. I was like, this is not the move." And then I start going, "Great, it's not the move because everywhere else you really ain't gonna be able to get the real. People gonna laugh just to be just to be generous, and that do, that doesn't help you. Like in LA." A lot, a lot of LA, not LA people, but people in LA, they have to know that you're not helping when, you, when you're when you're being polite because what you're doing is you're setting comics up for failure when they leave LA. Because it's all performers in LA, in New York. So everyone, if it doesn't go well, people are like, I'm just so happy he's expressing himself. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a Very exactly. rough day in my class. I was very vulnerable in my acting class. <laughs> so I just appreciate his vulnerability. And then you go to Phoenix with someone that lost their job. They hate their wife. They're addicted to Percocet. <laughs> And you get there with the same mm, spaghetti. How come spaghetti is always too wet? And people are like, no, I have a bad life. No. <laughs> it's a world of difference, man. It's a world of difference. So I was like, I want to have one of the hardest rooms because I figured like this, if they give me a hard time in this room, this would be the equivalent to 
me doing okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it. And it's, and it shows in the special when, when, you, when you look at it, like when people, when, when people look at it, you, you see this is, this isn't your normal LA set or audience. You know, this is, wow. this is like me, like soul wrenching, like riding home with no radio. You know, <laughs> oh, a bad set and no radio home. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, I know that. Well, you're like, you piece of shit. You don't even deserve music. You don't deserve to listen to a Marianne. All you hear is turn signals. That's oh. it. You just tick, tick. You hear tick, the light change. Tick, tick, How tick, am I tick. hearing light? <laughs> That's wrong. The other thing that you kept in your special that I was so happy about is you were like, why did I wear this sweater? Because every time a joke doesn't go over well, you're never going to wear that shirt again. Especially if it's new. You get home and you're like, this is stupid. Why would they put the, why would they put the armpit here? Like it's the shirt you'll, bl ball. you'll blame your set on everything. Why did I eat oatmeal before I went? I'm not eating oatmeal no more. Pioneer days? Who eats oatmeal? <laughs> I'm a successful man. <laughs> I am free to DJ on Sundays. That's the level of success I get. Oatmeal and cuts. Every Sunday, Dion Cole. Plan the cuts and eat oatmeal. Every Sunday, 11 a.m., disco oatmeal. <laughs> oh, this is geriatric show. Oh, God. Sona. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ah. What's happening? There he is. Ah, yes! Yes! No! No, Kobe! No? Oh, right. Can't do that. You have to lick with the mask on. With the mask yeah, on. Yeah, it's a myriad of reasons. Super How you guys doing? What's up, Cody? How are you? What you, th what you doing, buddy? Well, you know, just uh, going over my notes. Whatever, just grinding it out. Just trying to grind it out. That's you what know? people say. Nice coat. Right? Nice. Yeah. Jeez. Red Baron. Yeah. Red That's what I'm doing it. <laughs> like a biplane in here from the Truman era. And <laughs> the Largo. Ooh, and a big old foam pouch. There's dungeon in here and it's creeping me out. Oh my God. It's okay, Conan. But I gotta run. I gotta get my makeup on. I'll see you guys later. Bye, right, brother. Have a great you show. Know. Love you, man. Love you. Get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody about the ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> We're ahead of you. <laughs> oh my god, that was horrifying. I'm sorry. I was upset about how much I look like that dummy. <laughs> <laughs> like it looks like the dummy I would work out my therapy on. <laughs> like, you need to yell at you. Yo, Sona, what room are you in? I know. <laughs> there's a there's a military outfit and a ventriloquist dummy. That's that's, that's gotta make it on the show. Golly, look at that room. Oh. And a troll <laughs> a weightlifting troll. <laughs> But Largo's known for its bodybuilding content. 1981. That's sad because that means someone peaked in 81 and they're still keeping that around. It doesn't even have a plus. You don't even know whose it is. I remember one of my mom's boyfriends had bodybuilding tapes and he was really proud of them. And we'd have to watch bodybuilding tapes, which are just a guy just going like, Ish. Ish. there's no action. So he's just watching a man's nude torso. Ish. Sona, you've been doing, um, well, at the beginning of the year, doing Sona Fixes Your Life. A lot of things have changed since then. You might be bringing it back. Have the questions got more serious? No, 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 no. I don't, I, even if there is a serious question, I'm not equipped to answer it. I'm not like a licensed therapist. And uh, most of the advice that I give is terrible. So I think that, yeah. You know, I think that it's just, we're going to keep it lighthearted and fun. It'll come back eventually. It's really fun to do it. Has there ever been a question where you're like, I can't, without naming names, that you were like, I can't answer this. This is too. No, I've answered all of them. Yeah, none of them are like, a lot of them are like, 
what do I like, what should I cook for Thanksgiving? Or, Hey, can I eat old butter? Like, you know, <laughs> those are the questions that people. Is ask. there such thing as old butter? That's what I said. Yeah. And also I'm, I'm in the house where I'm like, I don't even pay attention to the best buy or sell by dates. I go by smell. So if something smells weird, I won't eat it. But if it's like two weeks past the expiration date and it's fine. Yeah. Dion, how do you feel about that? Because like the best before sell by, it's all over the place. It's kind of like asking someone in LA their age where it's just like, let's just say I'm best before June. Like you can't, there's no way to tell the dates on anything. Are you guys strict with dates? That's funny as hell. No. I'm I, not. I mean, we have garbage growing I'm strict up. So with no. dates. You no, are I'm strict with dates. I am. Yeah, and if something in you, if there's like an almond milk and it says February 21st and you see it and it smells fine, you won't even eat, you won't drink it. Yeah, I'm throwing that away. Really? Because I've done it before and I was like, hell yeah, whatever. And I got sick one time. And after that, I was like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. It's yeah, like once, once you get sick, then you'll you'll you you've been you've been good. So you gonna know, you're gonna keep eating all those expired things. What about medicine? Do you do the same thing with medicine? Oh yeah, it gets no. better. Cough syrup, robitussin gets better. <laughs> After the date. <laughs> After the date starts to separate a little bit, starts to curdle. Like, Ooh, what's this? No, my my parents are very old school. My mom did not give us like medicine. She just was like, just tough it out and beat it yourself. <laughs> old school, that's like the 1600s. You just beat it out and do some bloodletting. <laughs> I know. So we would just suffer and then we'd get over it. So I don't even. I don't even know what medicine I have in my house. Like, I don't think I have any, I don't have cold syrup. This is the only medicine a lot of family have. They have like cough syrup and Pepto-Bismol and duct tape. That's, uh, that's, that's <laughs> all they <laughs> fix anything that's wrong with right, you. Right. What's the duct tape for? My stomach hurts. Swallow a little piece of duct tape. Get all those toxins out. It's like those Bjorn strips. Dip it in. Pulls the toxins out. <laughs> oh, you guys, I might have to. I might have to take off soon because we're gonna have to do this interview. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. We're gonna wrap up soon. We got, we got a, a bunch of stuff here. This has been great. Okay, good. This is also the internet where no one's like, "Can the show be longer?" No one on YouTube <laughs> ever been like. Wish this was we're one of people's many open tabs right now. We have like hardcore porn, some Craigslist purchase they're not gonna buy, some screenplay they're not gonna finish, and then we're over here talking about archery and licking arrows. <laughs> Sona, maybe Sona fixes your life is gonna come back in the near future. I think so. So send her some real heavy questions. Hard hitting stuff. I'll I'll fix anything. And then Dion has the special out slash non-special. It's on the Netflix YouTube. It comes up right away. Oh, you could just go to YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in working it out. Working it out on YouTube. Bam. You'll see it. It's right there. And then check me out every Sunday. I get down. I get down every Sunday at, uh, on um, here DJing on Instagram Live. And um, I produced a movie that I'll probably have to come back and talk about all that. Oh, but no, no, but just cool. real quickly, what's the movie? Real quickly. No, it's it's it's, it's called it's called I'm fine. Thanks for asking. And uh, you can go to the Instagram page and just like the page. And then once we get the movie, uh, it's already shot, it's done, and everything. But once we um, finish our negotiations with it, then I'll let everybody know. But it's called I'm fine. Thanks for asking. It's, it's a good movie. Me and my partner Kelly Kelly, and um, yeah, we 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 excited about it. We got some other projects too, so I definitely be back cool. to talk to you all. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. So go check that out and follow that page right now. Support the movie. You know, trying to do your own. Yeah, and Dion Cole on uh, on Instagram. Yes. Thank you all so much. This has been great, Moses. So yeah, much. man. Yeah. Thanks for talking to me. First person to talk to today. This is great. Love, baby. Thank y'all, man. Sona, thank you so much for being here. Have a great show. Oh, thank you. Thank Today, you. I'm sure you're going to be in it. This yeah. is a lot of fun. We'll see you guys soon. <laughs>